guys, and here is the finished product. We are inside the Grandio greenhouse. Special thanks to Grandio for sponsoring this video, and I am super excited to use this greenhouse for all kinds of awesome outdoor aquaponics off-grid uh, projects in the near future. Now, this is a 12 by 16 foot long greenhouse. It is a gable or barn style greenhouse. Um, so it has sort of multiple parts to the ceiling. And um, all in all, I think this project came together really, really well. It's something that I've been planning for several months. It's something that has taken several months to uh, eventually put together and make happen. Uh, but the actual build itself, the time lapse that you saw, was over a period of three or four days. Um, now, there was a lot of prep work that went into this before I was even able to unpack the kit and start constructing. First, uh, I had to clear the ground and there were bushes, there were shrubs, there was all kinds of undergrowth sitting where we are now. All of that had to come out. Uh, the topsoil had to come off. I built a uh, 4x4 frame for this greenhouse to sit on and then I had to backfill in gravel so that um, the entire inside is flat. Now the ground isn't done yet and we're going to take a look around the greenhouse in a minute but I wanted to uh, spend a few minutes talking about this build, this process, and uh, all of the things that I learned along the way. I feel like this is one of those things that looks easier uh, when you watch a video or when you look at a picture uh, than it actually is when you set out to build it. And um, you know, a, a greenhouse like this is sort of like the top of the line, right? This is an aluminum and twin wall polycarbonate greenhouse. And as such, there are a lot of pieces. Now, you know, there are much simpler greenhouses that are have a, a lot less pieces. Uh, however, a lot of those aren't meant to last a very long time. Uh, this is built to last. And so um, even though it took a little bit longer to put together, even though I had to read the directions very, very carefully, get super organized with all of the parts and pieces that I had laying around before I even started building, I think it was worth it in the end. So we are inside the greenhouse. Um, this is a place that I am really excited to hang out um, in and shoot videos in uh, for many, many years to come. I believe the, the polycarbonate panels are supposed to last at least 10 years and the aluminum should do the same. So uh, as long as there aren't any tree branches that come crashing down in the middle of winter, or anything like that, this thing should be super solid and, uh, and, and you know, basically worry free. Now, there are a few uh, little finishing touches that I need to do. I will talk about those as we walk around the greenhouse. But for now, uh, the greenhouse is built. Finally, all of the pieces are put together. I double checked, there are no steps left except for a few finishing touches. Let's get up, walk around, and we can take a look at the entire structure, and uh, I can talk about my plans for the inside of this thing and the outside of this thing. All right, and again, special thanks to Grandio Greenhouses for sponsoring this build. You can find them online at grandiogreenhouses.com, and if you like what you see in this video, and you want to try your hand at building a greenhouse like this one, use code GJAQUA, all one word, when you check out at grandiogreenhouses.com and it goes to support this channel and future videos like this. All right, so as you can see, this is a very tall roof. I can't reach the ceiling by a long shot. I think it's around nine feet tall, uh, which is really awesome. We've got nice big doors, sliding doors um, on this greenhouse. 
and they lock as well, which is another pretty cool feature. Um, over here, we have a bunch of different windows, which we can open and close and adjust depending on the weather conditions. Uh, it's actually about to rain, so I think what I'm gonna do is close all of these before I go inside. But we have basically uh, four windows on each side, and uh, I believe you can get a kit, which uh, I think automatically opens and closes these. These are just the manual ones. Uh, this is what comes standard with the kit, but uh, pretty cool. You can arrange the windows wherever you want. Um, I just sort of spaced them out. I think it looks pretty good. Um, in terms of the floor space here, we've got uh, 12 feet wide and we've got 16 feet long. These greenhouses come in a variety of different lengths, but the width, I believe, for the Grandio uh, Summit, which is the model we're inside, uh, is always gonna be 12 feet. So, uh, this is the inside. Let's go take a quick look at the outside. Now, this is where we have the majority of the work to do, uh, some finishing touches. We've got existing brickwork, which was here. Uh, I had to dig some of that out in order to get my 4x4 frame in. So I need to backfill a lot of this, uh, specifically right here, but also uh, over here along the lawn as well. And I've got a bunch of gravel for that. Uh, I haven't gotten around to that yet, but I've got a bunch of gravel. And what I'm going to do is lay the gravel next to that 4x4 to make sure that any water um, that sort of accumulates here uh, is going to um, soak into the ground and not sit. I don't want any soil, wet soil, to sit against those uh, pressure treated uh, 4x4s. We do have a small gutter attached to the side of the greenhouse, which is uh, pretty cool. I don't know how well it's going to work, but uh, we'll have to see how much rain we get. Um, when we come to the back, uh, you can see I do need to add some additional fill here. That's a little short. We have a gigantic hole in the back side of the greenhouse, and all of this fill is what was used on the inside of this frame in order to get that completely level. So this hole, the reason it's here is because I was considering putting a uh, 600 gallon stock tank out here but what I eventually landed on was actually closer to a thousand gallon poly tank uh, it's meant for aquaculture it should do really well outdoors in through the winter essentially what it's going to be is like seven or eight feet uh, across circular and then about four feet deep so I do have a little bit more digging to do in here uh, I'll probably take some of that fill and try to level this out a little bit. And the plan is to do some uh, off-grid, hopefully, aquaponics. And we'll take a look inside uh, what the plans are on the inside uh, for growing vegetables and raising fish and, and whatnot. But on the outside, the outdoor portion of this system is going to be this thousand gallon tank and I'm super excited about this. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be something that I'll need to drain down during the winter or if it's something that I can leave uh, full. Uh, I'm not quite sure if it's, it's gonna be quite deep enough to, uh, to allow fish to survive throughout the winter, but it, it may be something we need to try out. Um, so the plan here is to connect this 1,000 gallon poly aquaculture tank with a pump to the greenhouse and the uh, aquaponics grow beds that will be inside it. So essentially what's going to happen is water is gonna pump from this gigantic pond up into the greenhouse and then that water is gonna spill through uh, hopefully some, uh, some media beds and then that water will return back and drain back into this pond. So as long as I keep this pond topped off, 
and hopefully the rain will do a good enough job at that um, everything should be fine and the ideal situation would be to use a low power uh, pump maybe a DC pump which is able to run off of uh, solar panels if you go check out my previous videos from a year or two ago uh, I did put together a, a small proof of concept off-grid uh, solar powered battery powered DC pond pump powered um, chop and flip aquaponics barrel system that worked pretty well if I scale that up now here uh, you'll see the purpose of those projects because the end goal has always been a greenhouse and a large tank so it's in and there's definitely more projects to come uh, the greenhouse itself uh, as we step back you can sort of see the shape and the size of this thing it is pretty big and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. One thing that I do have left to do is to apply some silicone uh, between the aluminum extrusion and the twin wall polycarbonate uh, on these end walls and these side walls. It isn't something I'm gonna be able to do today because it is supposed to rain the next few days, but uh, after things dry up, uh, I will install that and should be good to go there is a little bit of moisture inside some of these panels and honestly that was my fault uh, I left these outside and uh, I probably should have kept them inside during the build process and so those ones just unfortunately got a little bit of moisture inside them uh, however after a few days in the Sun that should all evaporate out uh, as the ends are open and uh, hopefully we won't get any more uh, moisture inside once we apply that silicone uh, to the outside so this is the greenhouse from the outside let's take a look back inside and the plans for this um, moving forward now you will notice there are some trees and there's quite a bit of shade over the top of this greenhouse I'm not super concerned with the amount of sunlight that this thing is gonna get. I'm more concerned about the utility of this building moving forward. Uh, I wanna be able to store quite a bit of stuff in here. I wanted it to be close enough to the house that I had easy access to it. Uh, as you'll see, we do have a shed that's way back there and that's pretty useless in the middle of the winter when there's three feet of snow on the ground. This is gonna be a lot more useful because it's right here uh, at the end of the driveway and we do have plenty of my aquarium box stuff that comes in and goes out and some of it just needs to stay outside or at least be covered and uh, that's what this side of the greenhouse is going to be dedicated to uh, what I'm gonna do is probably take some cinder blocks and then put pallets on top so that it's lifted off the ground. I might be able to get two tiers of those. We'll see. Um, but I should be able to fit a standard size pallet right here. Uh, this is like a four foot section here to this beam. And I should be able to get uh, one, two, three, four pallets in a row here along this wall. And uh, I'm planning on putting driftwood, uh, aquascaping, stone, uh, anything that's big and bulky and heavy and uh, just needs to stay outdoors. Uh, I'm sick of carrying all that stuff inside and uh, it, it honestly doesn't need to be inside. So uh, at least for the time being, that is the plan for this side. That may evolve over time, but um, you know I've got plenty of stuff to get out here. So that's what's going in on that side. And then on this side is the side that's going to get more sun uh, throughout the day. And I think that's where uh, my plants are going to do best. Um, now, during the morning hours, the sun sort of rises over here and then it eventually goes over these trees here. So at least in the morning, we've got, um, you know, from 
6 a.m. to uh, like 2 p.m. We've got some pretty good sun on this side of the greenhouse. And I think what I'm going to do is a similar system. Uh, I'm going to use uh, cinder blocks to raise things up. And then I may build some sort of uh, you know, two by eight uh, platform type system and uh, or two by sixes or something. Not quite sure yet, but build a platform which goes the entire length of this side of the greenhouse and uh, upon that platform what I'm going to do is place a series of Laguna uh, pond tubs. They make a 60 gallon tub which is only 12 inches deep um, but is close to four feet long which is pretty much ideal for like a deep water culture uh, bed system for aquaponics. and. The idea with that is that each one of those would be connected together. So they would all be on the same level. They would all be connected through a series of bulkheads and my pump would pump water in one and that water would just be forced by gravity to sort of flow through uh, all of them to a drain, which would then drain all of the water back into the large pond outside. And um, for the time being, um, I think probably the easiest thing and the most fun thing may be to just set up each one of those tubs individually, just to start out with. And uh, as we sort of move along, we can connect them. We can get all of the, the plumbing and the, the piping together and uh, get this whole system up and running. There are some electricity needs uh, to a big system like this and I'm not prepared to tackle that quite yet. Uh, we do have power from the house, but I don't wanna run anything uh, underground. I don't wanna put any sort of circuit breaker or box or anything out here um, that connects to the house. I want this to be completely off grid. So for the time being, the next few months, I may just set up those tubs as individual ponds and throw some fish and some aquatic plants in, and uh, I should have six of them along the entire length here and just see how those do. And uh, the true aquaponics build may continue throughout the fall and uh, hopefully starting in the spring, we will have our first uh, official batch or crop of plants, uh, in edible plants, human plants uh, in this greenhouse. So that's the plan. Obviously I got a little bit of a late start on this build. Uh, I think it would have been a lot nicer to have done this in the spring. We've had a few really, really hot weeks, just hot, humid, rainy. It took two full weeks to, uh, to get this thing put together from the time that I got it, just because uh, of how much rain we've been receiving. So that's the plan. It should leave me plenty of space here to walk down the center aisle of this greenhouse. We've got pallets of aquascaping supplies, all kinds of great My Aquarium Box stuff on one side. We got some ponds, soon to be aquaponics, uh, deep water bed cultures on the other side. And uh, I think that's gonna keep me quite busy uh, into the fall. Now, the ground itself is nothing special. It's just gravel. Um, it's not even 100% level yet or tamped down. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is finish the ground on the outside first uh, and then I'll come in here and smooth this over and level this off. Um, we do have some anchors, some ground anchors in each of the corners of the greenhouse. I have yet to attach these but I'm going to bolt it into the 4x4s so that uh, if there was ever a large wind storm, this entire thing is anchored to the ground and hopefully it should not go anywhere. Um, as for the covering for the ground in the greenhouse, for now, honestly, I think I'm just gonna leave it as gravel. Uh, I was looking at some of the like landscaping um, coverings uh, at the you know, big box stores and there's the really cheap stuff that looks like it's just gonna immediately fall apart. And then there's the really expensive stuff. I think it's like the cheapest roll was like $80. And I don't even think I would use a quarter of it just because this thing is not that large. Um, so 
you know, I'm not super excited to go out and spend like a hundred bucks on something to, just to cover the ground. But what I might do is get some of those rubber mats and lay those along the middle. Uh, again, you know, two thirds of this greenhouse is, isn't really gonna be stepped upon because there's gonna be stuff there. So if I just lay some mats, those rubber mats down the middle, that might be enough for me for the time being. And uh, you know, maybe down the road we cover it with something. Uh, I don't really foresee a whole lot of weeds or anything growing inside here. I could be wrong, but uh, I guess time will tell and we will tackle it when that time comes. Anyways guys, that is the greenhouse. Again, special thanks to Grandio for sponsoring this video and this build. I think this thing came together wonderfully and I think it will make quite the impression and I think it already has. So, hope you guys enjoyed the build. Stay tuned, watch all of my future updates to see what goes inside here and all of the progress that will be made to complete the aquaponics build and uh, everything that goes inside it. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.